JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, hunt on for serial rapists operating in St. Anne. Please remember to subscribe, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. There is a hunt on for two men suspected to be serial rapists who have been committing sex crimes on women and girls in St. Anne communities. According to a medical doctor at the St. Ansby Hospital, medical personnel have noticed a surge of women as young as 12 to as old as over 50 years who had gone missing for two or more days before showing up at the hospital stating that they were raped by two men. The doctor said each of the women had a similar story. They were alone in broad daylight on busy streets when the men drove up, pulled them into a vehicle and intimidated them with a knife. They were then driven to unknown locations as far as Portland and raped for two days, most times unprotected, before being released. The doctor added that on January 22nd, in a 12-hour period, six girls showed up at the hospital at different times with similar complaints of rape. The doctor said the locations are in and around Ocherius, communities like Pineapple and the Ferngully area, with some cases occurring in St. Mary. In the community of Pineapple in St. Anne on Thursday, residents condemned the rapes and said that the abominable and dastardly acts had left a black eye in the community and the parish. While they bemoaned the series of events, it was one particular occurrence that left them irate, the abduction and rape of a 42-year-old woman. One relative of the woman was a picture of grief. She explained that the victim went missing on Wednesday and turned up Thursday night emotionally distraught and physically hurt. It was her day off. She got watch if you buy something and on her way coming back in a broad daylight. She's standing at the clock waiting for cross the road. By standing at the bank inside waiting, them stop the car, pull her in and drive off with her. That's what she tell us. It was two men and them both rape her night and day until early morning when them kick her out of the car. Them take her from Ochi to Portland. She had a thousand dollar bill in her pocket and she pay her fear from there to get back in her Ochi, the relative said. When we talked to her, she said she was near a bus stop. So she walk and walk until she almost reached another town. She followed the road, go straight out and she see a lady and ask her where she was. And she said she in a Portland. She go in a nearby shop and buy sanitary supplies and put them on because she was torn up. I asked her where she get money from. She said she had a thousand dollar in her pocket and pay her fear until she get back in her Ochi. The relative continued. When we get news that she was in Ochi walking, acting strange and all of that, I go down there with other family members and carry her to the station, and then the police carry her to the hospital. When we get there, she never wants anyone to touch her. She don't want to see anybody. She was led into the hospital and turned back, so we catch her upon the bypass in Ochi. But despite being in a somber mood, the relative was clear about one thing the perpetrators must face jungle justice. If me come face to them, jungle justice, I would I feel good for jungle justice because then we do it to somebody else. Them man, they not supposed to go to prison go eat taxpayer money at all. Them not have no heart. Me not think them come out a woman. That sister didn't even really keep company. It's from church to home. She's a Christian lady. She does business with her work and home, the relative said. When I was coming by the hospital, coming out of the emergency, a police carrying another case where the same thing had happened to that person too. After them admit her and she'll leave the next morning, one more case come in. So I guess there's something going around. You hear about these things happening at night, not Miggle Day. Superintendent Dwight Powell, commanding officer of the St. Anne Police Division, said that since the start of this year, there have been five reported rapes across St. Anne, an increase compared to what was reported last year. There are three incidents coming out of Ocherius, one over in Monique and one in Claremont. Even though Claremont and Monique are close to Ocherius, the police jurisdiction is different. Where was it worse than where we were last year at the same time? Would have concluded the year last year with 15 rapes on the books, 12 of which were cleared by arrest and persons placed before the courts. It seems we have an uptick since the start of the year, Superintendent Powell said. Further, the St. Anne commanding officer said why the investigations were not leading to any connections between the incidents to reports which indicate abduction and a sexual assault were creating widespread apprehension in Ocherius. He said the incidents were under active investigation and so far, the only lead is a common thread with the vehicle. The victims will be asked to assist us via identification parade, 
when we reach that stage. But for the time being, what we are seeing from investigation is a silver or white motor vehicle being used in the two incidents mentioned. The information coming from the victims will be critical, but that's the only description they could give us at the time to work with. People out there may know or see something, so we are appealing to the public. If there's any information in the space, feel free to call any police station in St. Anne or where they are comfortable to assist us with any information. As long as we get those information, then we'll be able to work and see how best we can bring a satisfactory end to this situation, Superintendent Powell said. In the meantime, St. Anne's Bay Hospital CEO Dennis Morgan said that while he's unable to comment on the specific cases, he has seen the social media post warning women to be more vigilant, which he endorses. He added that when rape cases come to the hospital, for the most part, the person is accompanied by the police and the matter is treated as an emergency. Morgan, while remorseful, also encouraged the victims to make use of the counseling services available at the hospital at no cost to them. We have a counseling service at the hospital. It can be requested in terms of follow-up. Some level of counseling would have happened in the initial stages, but if requested on a follow-up basis or a department is willing to go that extra mile. If the family wants to engage the facility, we'll accommodate that, Morgan said. It's very traumatic and you just need someone to say it's not your fault. You're going to be all right and we're going to get through this together, Morgan added. Alicia Kelly from the mental health department at the hospital also encouraged the victims and their families to utilize the counseling services. She also highlighted the operational schedule of the mental health clinic in St. Anne. At the infirmary, the clinic is held every second and fourth Tuesday, St. Anne's Bay Hospital every Monday, Brownstone Health Center every Thursday, Bamboo Health Center second and fourth Wednesdays, Ochiwiris Health Center first and fourth Thursdays, Wattown Health Center second Tuesdays, Alexandria Community Hospital second, third and fourth Wednesdays, Claremont Health Center, second Wednesdays, Stepney Health Center, first Thursdays, Clarksonville Health Center, third Thursdays, Monique Health Center, second and fourth Fridays, Madras Health Center, second Tuesdays, St. Anne's Bay Health Center, first, third and fourth Tuesdays, and Mondays and Thursdays at Steerton Health Center for the Child Guidance Clinic, Kelly said, while pointing out that clients have access to clinical psychologists and resident doctors. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.